Welcome back to our spiritual formation video series for the Agone Institute. My name is Dr. Greg Lindenville, and the Agone Institute is put on. It's a combination of efforts between CSRM, the Association of Church Sports and Recreation Ministers, of which I am the executive director, and also Uncharted Waters, which is led by my friend and colleague and co-professor of the course, Tim Conrad. It's a privilege for us to bring these videos to you and be part of this work, collaborative work together. We're in a series of spiritual formation videos, devotionals, if you will, and this series is for the models, 21st century models of sports outreach and sports ministry. This series is shown for various seminaries and and universities as well as for those taking it for certification. We have talked a lot about the last few weeks about running our race and fighting our fight coming out of 1 Corinthians 9. And I'm going to take you now to a series, this will be the first in a series off of another one of the, the grand passages within the New Testament that deals with sport and recreation. It's one that sometimes is not fully understood as being representative of one of those times that the Apostle Paul is inspired by the Holy Spirit to write in such a way that reflects thoughts that come out of the sports world and using sports metaphors. And yet I think when we get through this next three or four sessions on this particular passage, that you're going to come to a point of really comprehending why I say this may be the one of the most fundamental passages. Let me pray as we get started. Heavenly Father, again, we thank you for this opportunity. We pray, Holy Spirit, that just as you inspired the writing of this thousands of years ago by a human person that I believe is the Apostle Paul, that regardless of who you inspired to write it initially, originally with, that unless you inspire it today in its reading, and whatever day, century, decade ahead that it is watched and listened to, that unless you inspired in both of those, in some ways the original inspiration is not important. Now, of course it is, because there are other people that will be reading this contemplating this, but today, whether it's being taught by me today or listened to by those that are tuning in in various ways, make your word live today. Oh, Heavenly Father, we pray this for the expansion and enhancement of your kingdom. We pray in the power of your Holy Spirit, in the name of your Holy Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus, who is the Christ. So hopefully you can turn to chapter 12 of Hebrews 11, and I'll pull it up on my electronic version here and read it for us. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. That's the first verse of the 12th chapter. Now, this assumes that you've read the last chapter. And in fact, for those of you that may not be aware of this, the Holy Spirit didn't inspire the human writers to write in chapter 12, verse 1. They just wrote these letters. They wrote these treatises. And the Bible is no different than any work of antiquity that is studied or any modern work that's studied. In order to study it and have groups talk about it, it needs reference points. Now, in our modern Western English world, we use page numbers a lot. Think of chapters and verses in the same way. It's just a reference point. And unfortunately, these chapter breaks often come when a thought should be continued. This is understandable because there's there's been a whole list of chapter 11 that is known as the faith chapter. By faith Moses, by faith Abraham, by faith Barak, by faith all these different people, Deborah and others. 
and it keeps having us come back to what faith is. But it really, if you step back into the Jewish mindset, this is written to the Hebrews. These were the heroes of the Hebrews, the heroes of the Jewish faith. And so what was happening here was that, again, I believe that Paul was the writer of this, but regardless of that, the Holy Spirit was saying, you've seen this whole panorama of people, and now I'm going to bring to you these next passages built upon that whole panorama of heroes. And, and when I do this course live, and when, I, when I'm working with university students, we will go out to the track that's often that often surrounds a football or a soccer field or pitch. And in Canton, if I, if I could do this video outside, I would take you to Fawcett Stadium, where the Hall of Fame football game is played every year, and where it's one of the largest high school football stadiums in the entire country, world universities and high schools and professional teams all play on this stadium. And it has some 25 or 30,000 seats for a high school facility. And I take the students and, and we'll walk around that track and we'll envision this passage. And I'll say, you can imagine on a Friday night how these, stu how these student athletes come out and they play and they sit in front of 30,000 people looking down on them. And what a rush that is. And any of you that's played in front of huge crowds or preached in front of huge crowds, you know that there's something that happens. And what Paul is inspired by, the Holy Spirit to, to, to write, is that we've got up in, these, in the stadium all of these wonderful heroes. Look, up there, there's... there's this prophet and that prophetess and 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 over there there's that judge and 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 right on the 50 yard line is is Moses the lawgiver he's got that right in the mid court if you will seat front row seat and up there in the loges well that that's the family suite of Abraham Isaac uh, Joseph you know uh, and and all of the descendants Do you get this athletic analogy or metaphor? Do you get this background? And he's saying, so therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, again, martyria, those who have probably died for the faith. This was, an, this was the concept of a witness in the first century that you had to almost die in order to be a true witness. Would you be faithful to the end of your life? And at least in the Western world, our evangelism, so often when we come to our, our theology course on this, uh, our soteriology, what's our theology of salvation? It's just like, I'm going to get somebody to raise their hand today because they heard some things about Jesus that they liked and, and they think that they, they want to want to be maybe a Christian, as opposed to being a lifetime disciple that would even die for the faith. This is the sense that this is this group up there that is even willing to die. And since we are so greatly surrounded by this great crowd, then we are instructed to do some things that we'll come to in our next video. But I want you to grab hold of this setting. And in some ways, I want you to, to think of it as you think about the instructional videos. And, and more recently, you're, you're hearing about Robert Ross McBurney and, and uh, Dr. Luther Gulick and, and some of those that have gone on before and, and, and these people that, that have been the model for us within this faith and sport integration and more are to come. And in some ways, this is the key verse. It's right here in the middle of this course to say that everything that's come from uh, previous in our instructional videos and in our devotional videos and everything is going to come 
is rooted on this sense of that we are surrounded by these witnesses. We're surrounded by their models so we can create our own model. How are we doing on that? Is it coming clear? Is your model coming clear? Hopefully this course is helping you to see a level one theological truths based on Christocentric theologies that are then envisioned philosophically, the when, the where, the with whom that we go and, and form these models. And then out of that emerges our level three methodological models that we're learning from the past how to develop our current and future models. Who is it that surrounds you? This is being recorded the last week of October of 2015, which is the week that we celebrate All Hallows Eve, which has become All Hallows Eve's become Halloween. And the world has perverted this in a very detrimental way that there's ghosts and goblins out there. But All Hallows Eve was the Eve, just like Christmas Eve is to Christmas, All Hallows Eve is to the All Saints Day. This is a beautiful, beautiful holiday, holy day. When we stop to remember those saints that have gone on before us. Who is it in your life that's been your saint? And maybe if your tradition is to even light a candle in memory of that person, who is it that has impacted your life? Who's up in those stands that's cheering for you? A grandmother that's deceased, a grandfather that prayed for you, a great-grandfather. I had a great-grandfather who prayed for me. I had a grandfather who prayed for me, who talked to me. They've passed on but they're up there encouraging me. They're, 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 they're wanting me to run my race. Maybe it's your pastor or a teacher or a coach. Maybe you should go back and thank him. Who is it that surrounds you? If you don't have a group that surrounds you, that holds you accountable, that encourages you in this life, you're not gonna run long you're not going to run as fast or far. In fact, you may stop running. We need these witnesses in our life. And then, who will you be a witness to? Who will you influence? You see, the models are not just organizational, but they're interpersonal. And one of the models we need is to grab hold of someone and grab hold of someone, those that are ahead and those that are behind. Are you gonna be that link in the chain? We are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, just like in an athletic arena. What are we gonna do? Well, that's the next video. As a result of that, what are we to do? I'm Dr. Greg Linville. This is a spiritual formation video for the Agone Institute. <music>